Not that Johnny spills his stuff. <laughs> it's, called, it's the soundtrack to Johnny spilling his stuff. <laughs> uh, this actually came from a, an event over the weekend. I went to my uh, first uh, musical play that I, I haven't been to a play in like years. Mm -hmm. I went to this play and there was a chance line from one of the characters that said, like, uh, you know, I don't want gold, I just want love, or somebody doesn't smell that bad. Uh, <laughs> uh, this, this song is called, affectionately, She Don't Smell Too Bad. Right. Uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. 
Since we are going out over the internet, I don't know if you want everybody to know your social security number. So I'll only use your first name. If you want to announce who you are because you have a Facebook page or something out there, please take the time to do that. If you have an album for sale, please take the time to do that. If you want to give out a URL, please take the time to do that. That's a way of kind of introducing us to you. And then everybody will have two songs. Or if you're doing instrumentals, I won't let it go past 10 minutes. I will give you a countdown, okay? So up next, we here at the Sacred Ground love to sacrifice virgins. Yay. Troy, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>
right? And now, I swear I just did this myself. <laughs> How can these things tighten on their own? Some, on, some new smart feature that's going to outsmart us all. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So ladies and gentlemen, right now we're going to have a person who's been coming here for a while now, a poet laureate, and um, she has an announcement to make and won't be with us for a little while. So um, let's hear from Christina Desiree. Wait. Christina Desiree, I am Dandelion. I am going to do something very special tonight, seeing as how this will be my last performance for like about three or four weeks. I am slow in everything. I do have my disabilities and everything, but I do try. This is going to be good. Okay. After I was saved and gave my life to the Lord, I told my dad when I was nine years old, that I was going to come to California to be a girl. I told him when I was of age that I was leaving. It never happened. I've been here for over five years. I started my transition back in 2007. If I'm not mistaken, it was September. No, I said that wrong. September 13th, 2007. When I went to a Hedwig and the Angry Inch concert. I found out I was trans. Did not know that. Good. <laughs> You're too beautiful for this. I started living my life as Samantha Lee Carrington. Had my name legally changed January 14, 2008. Officially January 16th. I don't remember when I started taking hormones, but they had me on medroxypogesterone and spironolactone. I moved out to California May 2nd, 2008. When I moved out to California, they took me off of the progesterone and put me on estradiol, but kept me with the spironolactone. I was on injections for a while, but they only but the only way I could get them was from Portland, Oregon. I had my orchiectomy back in 2012, March 13th, if I'm not mistaken. Which I'm not. <laughs> okay. I've been living as Christina Holt since January of this year. And legally, Christina Desiree Holt since March 26th. My SRS was set for May 6th, 2014. They had me on the cancellation list, and I was really looking forward to getting it done next year. Somebody canceled, and they bumped me up. I told everybody that I was going to get I was going to have my surgery before I was 30, or at least I wanted it before I was 30. 
then I told everybody that it was going to I was going to get it done before or by the time I was 35 and look at me now I'm 34 I'm still 30 I guess nothing is impossible if you set your mind to it either sometime last year or sometime the beginning of this year I had a dream I was a girl and if I'm not mistaken I died I don't want to die after my surgery I want to live I don't show emotion well but I do try to be sympathetic or whatever or if it is considered empathy I don't know I just want to be understood <coughs> If you ask me, my comprehension level is off. I can understand some things, but I don't. But a lot of things I don't. Not so much. I'm sorry about that. You have to keep explaining it to me. And I also get tired of people getting mad at me when I ask them to repeat themselves or to explain themselves. One thing's for certain, I hate having to explain myself. Okay. I try to do it without crying. Sometimes I get mad, but it's not you asking me. It's me trying to explain information that I do not have. When I was 15, I ran away from home. Last thing I remember was leaving Blockbuster videos at 10 o'clock p.m. because they were closing. I started walking home and woke up three days later in the hospital. Mm. Apparently I died twice on the operating table, April 19, 1994. I remember very little about that day. I don't remember the accident at all. I remember waking up one time and asking where I was. I couldn't see anything. And that was the last thing I remember. Eventually when I came to, my girlfriend and her mother were there. I have been alive 19 years since the accident and I am thankful for my life. I am Dandelion. I am she and she is me. Christ-like, desired. Christina Desiree, Holt, heart of a lion, timeless. Okay, last, last bit. Cover guard. God, I need a cover guard, protective shield, something to keep me safe from harm. And no, not a charm. Something like a suit of armor, breastplate, sword, shield. My head, on my head, salvation. In my hand, your word, my sword. My faith in you, my shield. My breastplate, your righteousness. Lead me safely home. Steady my feet. The devil has no power. God, you gave me life. Not once, but twice. And thank you. Lead me along the safe path. Lead me home. Jesus, by your stripes, I was healed. And it will happen again. Thank you. Christina Desiree, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Coming up next, this is an artist who came here some time ago, and the first time I saw her, I said, something special is going to happen, and it has. And she has just finished recording her first album, which she will be releasing on Halloween. She will also be our feature here Halloween night. You've got to show up and spend at least 45 minutes listening to this artist. Ladies and gentlemen, Lady Zeitgeist. <laughs> new songs tonight. I'm very nervous about this first one, I confess. Um, it's going to be the first non-death metal 
vocal song I've done. Ooh. Yes, that is the sound of hell freezing over. <laughs> um, also, it's the first song I've written about being trans. Um, yeah, there's been speculation on what I identify as. I am a she. Um, apologize if that bothers me. But, um, but this song is called The Doll. It's just about being a kid. Uh, and stuck in the wrong body. Just roommate who woke you up in the middle of the yeah. night. Yeah. 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 
<laughs> All right, so this song, I got Very woken close. up in the middle of the night and I was really pissed off, so I wrote this song. It's called Shut the Hell Up, I'm Trying to Sleep. <laughs> some announcements here while this is going on. We don't have any uh, black curtains for stage production stuff. So. Um, coming up next week, ladies and gentlemen, the feature will be Frank Garvey. Now, if any of you people know anything about art here in San Francisco, Frank Garvey is a singer-songwriter. He is a sculptor. He is a painter. He is a poet. He is a playwright, he is an actor, and he writes letters. The man is the most versatile artist I have ever met, a regular Leonardo da Vinci. He also builds electronic robots. He, is, he was one of the first people I know that built a series of eight robots and had them act out an entire play no. one evening. It was 
absolutely monumental. And he did that about 25 years ago. Oh my God. Yeah, way ahead of the curve, Frank. One of the most creative people I know. He will be featuring next week. The week after that is something that if you miss, you'll be sorry. <laughs> On September 5th, Jack Cutter, the best finger picking guitarist in the Bay Area. He'll be spending 45 minutes with us. Now, the, the following week, September 12th, the only one I know who can finger pick almost as well, Joe Deanna here, who has a much better voice and looks a whole lot better than Jack. So please, please, she'll give you a little, she'll give you a little taste of it uh, in a while. Also, on September 19th, coming back, will be Charles Haymark and all the way from the Philippines. That's right. On the 26th, we have Daryl Jones. On the 3rd, Jimmy G, for all of those who remember Jimmy G last week, the guy who, who's written 5,000 songs in the key of A. And then on the 10th will be Johnny Hernandez. Yeah, baby! October 17th will be Side Street Ricky once again. And on October 31st, Halloween will be Lady Zeitgeist. Please, please, if you can, come in costume. I will be dressing up as myself, as my character, Mr. Natural. I do have robes and shit kicking boots and the whole nine yards. Right. I'll probably shave my head for it. Uh, just to keep true to the character. And I'll probably I'll probably put on another hundred and fifty pounds. So I look like my old self. Yes. Yes. So we still have an opening on October twenty fourth and from November seventh on we have openings. Now this gentleman, uh, or I should say, now this lady who's coming up next, ladies and gentlemen, um, she's been in the Bay Area for quite a while. And normally our feature is from 7 to 7.45. But she got misconstrued and thought it was 8 o'clock. So we're going to let her go on and do her thing. And she's going to entertain us for about the next, oh, 35 to 40 minutes. So please put your hands together for Dr. Dreams' son, Imaginorium, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry about my pronouns. People are going through too many changes too quickly. Ah, that's true. I'm gonna, <laughs> hard to keep. Oh, my. You got it. You got it. Okay. All right, you're going. Blue Yes, there we go. All right. And there's a stool if you need it, sweetie. Oh, oh, we know she, she doesn't like to sit down, but I don't want her to have to stand up for 40 minutes either. <laughs> I remember back in the 60s, the first time I wore a dress, I was shocked at how much wind goes up there. How do you girls do it? Well, you saw Marilyn Monroe. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah that's true. But, but all the time. How do you I mean, do it? So that's why you wear the tall socks. Oh, no, that's no underwear. Oh. <laughs> oh, I'll lay down. No problem. Because of, uh, I, I, I'm so used to like the Utah, for instance, you know, yeah. it's rock. But anyway. <laughs> All right, so I would like to start off with something. And as you know, my name is Dr. And I am the imagination mover. And the doctor is on. And right now, I'd like to take everyone's imaginations all your collective imagination. This entire room. And I'm going to take you back. And now you're back in 1969. Nine, 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 nine. 
Why, yes, you're in 1969, and you're one of hundreds of thousands at Woodstock. number. And this is my take on it. again and once again you're going back in time and you're now in the late 19th century and you are a combination butler as well as lab assistant and you happen, your name is Poole, and your employer is a gentleman by the name of Dr. Henry Jekyll, or Jekyll, whichever you prefer. <laughs> and you're there in the lab helping him, and he turns to you and says, All right, now, Poole, this is what I want you to do. All right, now I want you to take this pad, yeah, all right, writing pad, and a pencil, I'll sharpen it for you. There you are. Now, I haven't done anything yet. You don't have to start writing, all right? <laughs> Not everything I say, all right? Just put the pencil down. <laughs> all right, now, all right, when I point, you can pick it up. Now, all right, now, I'm going to take a test tube. Put it over the function burner. I think I'll put in a little bit of uh, Satomazin Kinsenhatter and a jug full of Hazelgang, we'll hit it, 
And a pinch of hazard. And a fossil hint of it. Now watch Pooh very carefully. <laughs> Note all the changes. Yes, I can I can feel. Feel something. I feel. I feel feedback. I I, <laughs> 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 I feel I feel nothing. <laughs> I know it. We'll try. We'll try this. Uh, new test tube. <laughs> All right, some Hasselton <laughs> and some Hazing. <laughs> drop of Hazel. <laughs> and a jug full of Hazel Gatum. <laughs> and a pinch of Hazel. And a package of Hazel Mither Autism. Stir it up. Now watch pool. <laughs> Yes. All right. Take it down. Yes, I'm, I'm beginning to feel something. Why, you nitwit, you? Hey, you don't like me. Cut it out. Why, you wit, why are you? Kelly Joe, a Kelly, a Joe, a who? Why, you? Where's Larry? Well, I, don't, I don't feel him inside me. <laughs> All right, here. Let's try uh, some hobble in the bottle. How about another one of our A little bit of false in. A little bit of that might help to add the test tube over here. <laughs> All right. A little bars of in, a little bars of little, and uh, a little bit of. And some unknown stuff. Oh. <laughs> Dissolve the thing. Oh, wow. All right, here we go. Okay, take it. Yes, it's me with another little story. 
And you know I like to move imaginations. And I'm going to move you all, everyone in this room, in fact, into a person. Yes, an audience member of this room. Yes, but you're all in one person. It's getting very confusing. It's a little tight in there, but you'll bear with it. And you're sitting there, and you're watching things. And uh, the doctor's up. Yes. He's doing his feature on an open mic Thursday at Sacred Grounds. And, uh, well, <laughs> you happen to notice that the doctor looks a little bit different. <laughs> and you're sitting there, quaffing your beer, slowly. And you notice the doctor the doctor is wearing a dress instead of black pants! What's going on? What the hell is going on? And then, and then you notice as you look towards the floor, the doctor is wearing women's shoes! Fuck! You pour the whole beer down. <laughs> and then, you notice, and you look even more, and you see that the doctor is wearing women's underwear! Wow! And he owes him any. Oh, well, anyway, and you're still looking, and, and you begin observing the doctor even closer, and you notice that the doctor is wearing women's breasts! Jesus Christ! Oh, no! Something else. Are we ready for this? But then everybody starts mumbling and talking to each other. <laughs> all around. Yes, you and the others are talking, and all eyes go to ladies. I, 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 gigantic sharp claws 
we all figure it's all over. But it's not! No! Because suddenly her long black tail, the tip of it is white. But this white tip turns into a vacuum cleaner! And she starts sucking everybody up in the street! You wake up at home in bed, and you figure, well, it wasn't real, it was just the doctor putting you in a, an imaginary story. So you go on with your life, go through that whole week, and then it's Thursday night again, and whom you see but the doctor. But the doctor is still, well, he is still a she. She just can't undo some magic. Someone, someone from Berlin says that you are the cat's meow. They love you in Berlin. Thank <laughs> you. 